Tall coming at you this time guys. I've actually had one hell of a week, so I'm going to talk a little bit about stress. I, like most people, have trouble managing stress. I think everyone does. One of the biggest things that I've actually had to come across that actually helps me manage my stress is time management. But one of the biggest things that can actually happen with time management is that you always want to slot in time for yourself when you do nothing. Nothing is great. Nothing is still something. You need your downtime to go with your uptime. But if you're anything like me, there's this terrible amount of guilt that tends to occur when you are doing nothing. Everyone always tells us that we should be striving to be better, that we should be succeeding, that we should be working hard. But at the end of the day, that gets extremely overwhelming and we get really tired and burnt out and people have nervous breakdowns. Now, I'm not going to say that my past week has actually led me to have a nervous breakdown or anything like that at all. There are people that have serious, far greater issues more than mine. But one of the traps with that thinking is that your problems tend to go on the lower wayside than other people's problems and you tend to ignore everything that you're going through. If you are stressed, if you are panicky about the fact that you're sitting still or that you haven't done something right or that you have done something too much or whatever the case may be that rattles around in our messed up heads, we tend to try to ignore the problem as much as we can because that sort of thinking is pain and we try to avoid pain. It's a general survival mechanism. The most important thing though is to never disparage your own feelings and it's something I've sort of forgotten about for myself this week which is why for this past week I haven't really done any videos. Everything sort of became a bit of stress, a bit of work and everything and it makes me feel crap if I do crappy work and generally the whole thing kind of spirals out of control and I lose my mind. I find that the biggest tool in trying to manage stress, to manage my life, to manage everything that actually goes wrong or right in my entire life, all those sort of feelings and emotions and everything that can get so high up and so overwhelming that it feels like we're crashing over a waterfall, the one thing I always try to keep in mind is perspective. Years ago I learned of a scientist known as Carl Sagan, and anyone who's ever been interested in remotely in science or, or space or anything has probably heard of Carl Sagan. But he wrote this great part in a book once that was later turned into a bit of a speech with an audio book and became known as the Pale Blue Dot speech. And you can find this on YouTube anyway, but here's a little clip of it right now. From this distant vantage point, the Earth might not seem of any particular interest. But for us, it's different. Consider again that dot. That's here. That's home. That's us. On it, everyone you love, everyone you know, everyone you ever heard of, every human being who ever was, lived out their lives. In the clip, he talks about the famous pale blue dot photo, where he asked the telescope to turn around and take a photo of Earth from how far away it currently was. But throughout the entire speech, he talks about how every dictator, every mother and child, every father, every brother and sister, entire families, uh, every country, every religious doctrine, every person that's been killed in the name of religion, uh, every workplace, every, every copier error, he talks about every single thing that could ever exist in our entire lives being suspended in a sunbeam on a pale blue dot. And for me, that sort of perspective in my head is something I try to keep in my mind at all times. That we are very, very, very small in this universe and that we are also very big and very capable of what we can do. There is no species to us known anywhere in the entire world that has as much potential as us. And as much as that fear of success can be overwhelming for us at times, that fear of failure is even greater. We don't want to fail. We don't want to be in pain. And our general human survival mechanism prevents us from doing these sort of things where it might hurt. It's why it's so brave when someone jumps out of a plane, goes bungee jumping, uh, falls in love and out of love. Uh, all these sort of things that can actually cause us pain. We consider these people extremely brave because we're scared of pain. It's against our natural nature to be in pain. But the sad reality is, is that life is pain. And it's about learning to be in love with that pain and to manage it and to understand stand it and make it part of yourself because pain doesn't ever really go away we just get stronger and the only way to get stronger is to keep being in pain I can't remember exactly where I read this but I think it was a documentary or something that uh, talked about how these Shaolin or these Buddhist monks or these monks in general uh, would hit bricks or hit concrete over and over and over again over and over and over and they would just keep doing that until it, until it broke and the surprising reality of it in the end was not that it was because they had a force of will or they learn to punch it harder or anything like that. It was because over time, and this is scientifically speaking, over time micro fractures occurred in the fist. And when micro fractures occur in the fist or in fingers or in bones or any, any bone on your body when micro fractures occur, calcium goes into the area and it hardens. So from a biological standpoint, they were literally getting harder through pain. I think this same mentality can apply to your mental mentality. You can experience these small amounts of pain over and over and over again until you learn to harden and develop and get better. With the right support network, 
work around you, you can actually achieve all sorts of things. Sure, having people to help you burden the load in your life is, is so important because we as human beings are a species that belongs in community. We need people around us. I would argue that the reason I think a lot of people feel bad all the time is because they don't have people around them all the time. Or worse, we develop such callous natures and such an inability to try and experience pain that we shy away from the world and we think everyone's shit. I went through that myself and I learned that I was extremely unhappy all the time. It wasn't until I really tried to engage people and stopped wondering why people didn't get me and instead wondered why I didn't get people that my life really started to turn around. So with this stress and with this pain and with this loneliness and everything that can occur in us, the hardest truth I had to realize with myself is that it's really on us. The ball is in our court to choose to experience pain, to choose to go against our general survival nature and accept the fact that yes, we may get hurt, yes, we may get stressed and overwhelmed and everything may happen, but tomorrow is coming. Because the perspective in life is that this is all we've got for all we know. We are sitting here floating on a pale blue dot and we are the biggest part of our worlds we could ever be. And for me, it is remembering that I have this power, that I have this ability, that I can push through, that I have this perspective in my life. That was the only reason I managed to get this video out for you guys this week. So I hope this little chat has actually been alright with you guys. I know I'm going to try and get back to stuff next week. Thank you so much for your patience. I am actually back on board. I'm ready to actually get going. I'm sorry I missed a week of stuff and I hope you guys had a great week too. Let me know how you're going below. And hey, if you're only here because of that Captain Boomerang video, I'm sorry that it's not always about pop culture, but sometimes I like to talk about real stuff. And hey, if you don't like it...